How to build your own Gondor mansion. Hi there and welcome to Good Enough Scenery. In this video series I will be teaching you exactly how I made this, including all of the details, the stonework around the windows, cutting the windows themselves, this awesome and intricate railing which is much easier than you'd think it would be, the stairs, the roof and of course inside more stairs and a playable area. This is such a wonderful addition to any gaming board. So if you want to build exactly this, then step inside the video series and I'll teach you exactly how. Ow. Seven centimeters high and six inches long. And these walls are gonna be uh, half as deep as this. So they're gonna be 10 mil deep. So we're gonna cut the design shape and then cut this in half that way using the wire cutter. Uh, you can do it with a knife, but it's just, if you've got a wire cutter, it's easier. Now marking one centimetre or ten millimetre intervals, and then marking ten centimetres in, sorry, ten millimetres in. I'm going to score down this line. And we're just going to do lines to meet this. Now we're going to cut all the way through on all of these. We're going to cut out um, half of these. Do the middle teeth or you can do the outer teeth. It doesn't matter because you're going to have to do the opposite on the longer pieces. Given that this one kind of blew out slightly, I'm going to cut that, make sure that one is cut out. It would be great if you could do this on all of them, but that's not how it's going to work. And neatly, you can just do that. The central ones is more difficult, so you're going to have to do this one and this one. The best way to cut out them is to get a smaller, thinner blade. This is the only one I've got uh, in the house at the moment. So, You have it. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. You could have them join just butting up against each other, but what happens then is that you have a clear line, you can see where it's uh, joined. So if you have them like that, then that will be hidden. So once you've cut out all your, I'm going to call them teeth, um, you'll end up with pieces like this. So I've done, just to show you, I've done some way I've cut the outside ones and some of the inside ones out. But the idea is that they then come together like this on the corner, but they'll be half as thin. So that joint will look really nice, but you can kind of just show how, and I think that's just quite satisfying. So this isn't how it's going to go together actually, but this is just to show you what it's like. So then you have a corner that meets like that, and then once the brickwork is going to carve into the sides, it's going to look uh, a lot better. Next up, we're just going to give these a light sand, just because this this side that's shiny will not take paint well at all. I'm going to add brickwork detail to these. Uh, all of the started one here. All that you need to do is you can use if you want it to look neater, then use a knife. If you want it to look more rough and ready, then use a biro for this. But all you have to do is just lightly score a line like that. So you do all your horizontal lines and then you can do the vertical ones. You need to do at least on both sides of it. You can measure this if you want to, that it will take forever with the amount that you have to do. So I'm just going to eyeball where I think a full brick length is. It's not perfect. And then the next line up, I'm going to bisect that. And then just repeat. There's another way of doing it. You can line up here and go there, miss a brick, there, miss a brick, there. So I'm going to do brick work on all of these on both sides. Here's our completed brick work done. Now you've got a decision to make about how to use these four pieces. So these are going to form the end parts of the Gondor Mansion. So they're going to be two like this at the end and two like this, the one at the other end. Now one of them is barely going to get seen at all because it's underneath. 
and two of them are going to have doorways in. So it's up to you to decide which of those you think, or how you want to use them. This here hasn't been cut as well as I'd like to it have. So I'm going to do this one as the back one that's just barely going to get seen. I mean, this one where it's been cut, you can see that that's not ideal there. So probably going to use that part as um, doorway. This will be the kind of what I would call the back of the doorway there. And either of these could be the doorway because they're both they're both pretty decent. This is your chance to kind of iron out your mistakes by choosing where each one's going to go. So next up, take your very worst looking one because this one's going to get seen the least. So this one that's got a bit of a gouge in it. Measure in um, three inches. We'll cut off at that brick. Actually, I think we'll cut off there just because. Then, oh. And then there's a knock at the door. So these are the two ground floor pieces. Next piece we're going to make is a joining piece uh, for the lower floor. So this is going to be the front door. This here is the back. Next piece is one to fit in this space here. This is going to be slightly longer because it's going to be um, an outside thing as well. I've just made another bit. And the only thing you have to be careful of, you have to make sure that when you cut your uh, notches here, that these notches actually are the right recipe. If you cut it that way around, you can't put it together. So most of this is going to be hidden, um, particularly this part here is going to be covered with stairs. But, but once you've cut this in half, you can make your choice of which one works best. So yeah, that piece just needs to have uh, its brickwork. I'm not going to put any arches on it. I'm just going to do brickwork on this one. Now with the other half of the bit you've just made, uh, you're going to be left with half a piece which we can still use. So we are going to be using this for uh, one of the kind of feature pieces of the downstairs part. Um, and this is going to be one piece with a large archway. So these are six inch pieces so I'm find halfway. And I want this to be um, two inches up from the bottom. And as luck would have it, that's in exactly the right place. Now, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to take uh, my very favourite cup to drink out of. Try and find the centre of that. And I'm just going to draw really large arch, right? So, right, so I'm going to cut this out. Um, that is now cut out, and I'm going to do some. Um, And then, and then we're just going to do our standard brickwork um, around this. Ends up looking like that. And the good news is we don't have to worry about the other side because that's going to be, I mean, you can if you want to, but it's going to be entirely hidden. So I'm just going to paint this as is because just to save time. Next up, we're going to make the walls that are a little bit longer. So this is the top part of the building. So this is going to be here, and these are so we need the walls for here and here. The most important thing to um, remember with this one is to get the uh, interlocking parts of it correct. So it's three, three in sections, so it's going to be nine inches. So it's going to be about as big as it is there, which is quite big, but it's a large building. Um, so nine inches, and then exactly the same height as these ones. So nine inches, six, seven centimeters up. I've shown you some previous videos, and I'm going to do this with the rest of these. But um, take, um, I'm going to add some texture, some stone texture, and get uh, some aluminium foil, put it into a ball, and then you can just literally press down and roll this. So that is without, that is with. Got the texture now, so next up is to add in the teeth. It's exactly the same as we have done previously, so I want to mark every centimeter. Okay, so we're gonna have one attaching at this end and one attaching at this end, which means that we've got to cut teeth out of every other one. As long as we do them opposite, then it'll be fine. It'll be 
it's going to be used as bricks. Now we just have to do the opposite on this side. If you're not sure, sometimes it's good just to mark them up so you don't do something stupid and end up having to redo the whole thing. So we're cutting out the ones with X's on. So the teeth are cut and that is uh, what it does. So now we're going to cut it down in this direction uh, so that this can actually form the other wall as well. But So that's the walls cut down the middle with the wire cutter and uh, that is what a top layer will look like in terms of construction, so solid. Next up with these, I'm gonna roll the insides in and then we're gonna add in brickwork just like we've done on the other ones. Uh, so I'm not gonna show you that because you've seen it before on other ones. So this is where we are up to in terms of what has been built, plus a sneaky piece around the back there. So next up is to build the bit of wall that's gonna go here and at the same time we are going to be building another bit to go along here which will form the side of the stairs. So we start with a 9 inch long and 70 mil high uh, bit of foam. To start with we are going to roll it both sides. Now we're going to cut the teeth into the ends so just to make sure that these match up with that there and I'm going to mirror that on the other side for the middle part. We're going to have to do something different, but we'll get to that afterwards. So this has been cut so it uh, fits in nicely with that. Now I need to do some cuts here to make this one join in so it's nice and square. So we have to be pretty clever with this. So to start off with, we are going to draw our lines, score them, which we for position and for the brickwork as well. Here's where I've been either very clever or very lucky. So this is the piece we're making, this is the bit it attaches to, and then this one attaches here, and then this attaches here like this. So we're looking to cut the holes that are gonna go here. Now what's great is because we've got the same teeth either side of this, it means that so this here gives us the exact position that we need to cut the holes into there, which I think is quite clever. Holes are cut, so now the moment of truth. And hopefully, that was quite satisfying. It's got a nice fit, and how's the look of it? So the look of it, you know, it's quite obviously you can see a joiner there at the moment, but you know we need to put the brickwork in, and then um, after we've done that we can look at ways of making that um, fit in together all a bit more nicely. I mean, arguably with that, the fact that this is gonna be hidden, it should have been done with a straight thing anyway, but I've done it now. So brickwork done on all of the outside, on the inside, only up to that, that's gonna be covered anyway with stairs, but I've done the whole of that bit. That is never gonna get seen really, so not bothered with that. This we've got so far, and actually now I'm gonna make a piece which is gonna go along here, so that's going to be the, the side of the stairs, and it's going to start off with a piece like this. This is the same as the last one we made. So we're only ever going to see one side of this. We're just going to roll this, and then I'm going to add uh, some brickwork detail. That's our brickwork done. Um, I need to decide whether this or this is going to be downwards. I'm going to go with this being on the top because it's a nicer top, and this is a little bit more rough. So that's going to be cut off at a kind of an angle here. Uh, but before we do that, I um, need to do the teeth, as I'm beginning to call it. And this one is actually going to match up with this one that we made earlier. So I'm going to cut the teeth uh, to fit with that one. Teeth done for the joining. Start, we're going to cut off this uh, thing for these stairs. It needs to go three inches along there. See why I've done this brickwork in a minute. doing it the same as me, keep this bit, uh, that bit, that's the kind of shape of it. Next up, two pieces to make, one for here and one for here. Not going to be made any differently to 
a bit like this. There's going to be one of them there and one of them there like that with the appropriate teeth cut for them. So nothing particularly new to see, so I'm just going to make them off camera. And there we have the final two wall pieces for the first two floors. And next I'll show you how it's all coming together. So this is where I'm up to in terms of what I've made. None of these pieces are glued together yet. They are just held together just by the fact that the joints are pretty good on them. Um, so need to make a floor, need to make some steps, need to make some inside steps. And I still haven't decided what I'm doing about the floor. Oh, and yeah, maybe a roof might be helpful as well. Now this next part is entirely optional, but I think it's gonna really add something to what the build looks like. So what I've done is I've cut out these arch shapes from some foam. We do not need it to be as thick as this. So I could do this with a hot wire cutter, but I wanna show you that it is possible with um, a blade as well. And you end up with something like this. With the brick detail, I think you could just, you can just have brick work and it will just look like a building. But with the, the Gondor Mansion, the Games Workshop released, it's got a lot more detail in it than that. So my plan is we're going to have the brickwork, but also we're going to have, it's going to be cut as well, but we'll have a couple of these archways like that, which are going to serve as some detail because we'll add some added brickwork. They're also going to serve as the, like, the door shape um, and any windows that we want to add as well. So on all of the, in all of these, smaller ones there's going to be two of these and all of the slightly longer ones uh, there's going to be three of these now if you have decided to cut archways man i've cut far too many but they uh <laughs> they look a little something like this um but with the wire cutter they are uh super easy to just uh... so this is going to be our um what i would call the front door piece um what i've done is marked it in three quarters of an inch from each edge and that's going to be the perfect distance for these two archways to be put in. So that's going to be, now there's going to be a doorway here. I'm going to stick this to this first, and then I'm going to use the hot wire cutter to cut out the uh, the middle of it. Put some super glue on with this type of foam. Which forms a nice solid connection with itself. Hold it down for a couple of seconds and then it should stay in place. Just need a smidge more glue there. Yeah, I can now pick that up. Now I'm going to add some detail to this archway. So the way that I'm going to do that is rather than with a knife, which I did for the brickwork detail, I feel like the arch would be a little bit more rough and ready, so I'm going to use a biro. So what I'm going to do is just carve out some stone shapes and I'm kind of digging into the um, thing and I'm just going to slowly make these slightly more angled. And I don't know much about architecture, but I do know that these tend to have what's known as a keystone, which is kind of that shape um, in the centre of them and the rest of them, well, Probably not exactly like I've done them, but I think it'll look good enough because this is going to be good enough scenery. Not like that, it's going to do the same on this side as well. So that's the detail done on both, and I've also cut out the middle, which looks nice and aligned. And then, and to finish this off, um, I'm going to put another archway on the other side and do exactly the same thing. And because all of these archways have been cut from like the same shape. When you cut it, put it on, it just fits, which just makes things so much easier. I'm also going to put some brick detail on the inside of the arch as well, entirely optional. So this is one end piece uh, completed. A doorway, put some detail on the other side as well. You can make two exactly like this, um, so on to the other ones. So this is the other upper door piece. Now what I'm going to be doing on this one is actually cutting a window. I'm going to be cutting a few windows and I'm going to be doing them exactly the same on all of them. So the window shape I'm drawing is just a centimetre up, so from the first brick and then I've measured a quarter of an inch I think it is, just over half a centimetre in from each edge 
And essentially what I've done is I've just tried to kind of make it parallel with this. So any other windows you see on any other pieces are gonna be done in exactly the same way. you have a window and again I'm just gonna unnecessarily add in some brickwork detail it's not it's not perfect but it's good enough showing some previous videos and I'm gonna do this with the rest of these but um, Take, um, I'm going to add some texture, some stone texture, and get uh, some aluminium foil, put it into a ball, and then you can just literally press down and roll this. And on these types of one, if you have it into this kind of sausage shape, then you can use the kind of thinner end to get into thing, or ideally you do it first, but I forgot. Now, just like on the nose walls, got more of these, which should be placed on the inside and the outside of these. That's all of the arches added. And just like on the other ones, I'm now gonna cut a couple of windows. I'm gonna take one of our archways from previously and work out exactly where that is gonna go and once that's done to draw around the inside of that because this bit here is going to get cut out. I'm going to go for the hot wire cutter in this instance. That looks something like that. I'm going to add some lines in here just to make the brickwork match up just for completeness. Not really necessary, but you, know, you decide yourself what's good enough. And then what I don't want to do is stick this So I'm going to make sure these are uniform the rest of it. So one of the easiest ways to make sure you get these arches uniform is to actually take one of the, any of the other pieces you've already done, these lining up here with that, nudge it up a little bit, see exactly where the other ones were, and then place these ones accordingly. So just like with the last piece that I'm going to draw an outline of where it needs to be cut out, Cut that out with a hot wire cutter and then I'm going to stick these on and then that will be that one finished. Done some rolling of the aluminium foil inside of that just because and added the, uh, the stonework lines as well. But that's that piece. Finito. And there we have the final two wall pieces for the first two floors. So it's taken a while but both sides of all of the pieces have been painted. Next up, we're gonna do some dry brushing, which takes it from looking like this to looking like that. Cheap white paint, dab that with this makeup brush. Now this isn't a strict dry brush, it's just getting a lot of the paint off of it. 
and then I'm going against, I'm just going across it lightly and just letting the white paint just hit the raised areas that have been created by rolling it in the foam and any other kind of scoring marks that I put on. There you have it, just bringing so up to life so much more. Putting it all together has made me realise two things. Number one, it doesn't make any sense for there not to be arches here and here and in a couple of other places on the other side. So I'm going to make some more arches. So this now is every single wall piece you will need in order to make your Gondor mansion. There's obviously other pieces to make, but the walls... They're completed now with archways, doors cut, windows cut. This is what you should be able to do. Ready to be stuck together and then based. Next up, one of my most hated things to make out of all of things in scenery, uh, stairs. And that's for, that's for um, one main reason, is that you have to make a choice as to whether the stairs are going to be realistic looking or whether they're going to be usable. You can't have both. This is the, uh, the bit we've made here. These are the stairs that are going to go inside. In terms of the height of those stairs and the width and the depth, that is what the stairs would look like. But there is no chance you could ever balance a model on that. So the stairs aren't usable in gameplay, other than unless you put a dice and then you balance the, the piece. You have to make the choice between usable and realistic. So I'm going for realistic with this one. If you want it to be usable, these steps need to be a half of a base deep, which is half an inch, which means they're going to be triple that. So you want to make those stairs really long or not have very many of them. Okay, so that is what the stairs are going to look like. How do they make them? Well, it's not rocket science. Um, I cut lots of bits this size. And how did I do this? I took a bit like this and I put it through the hot wire cutter over and over again. One of the best arguments for having a hot wire cutter because this just went through like this, one, two, three, four, five, and again, and you've got 11 of them, 12 of them made. And then I cut them, they don't need to be as deep as that, because most of them are going to get hidden when you're making stairs of this size. And then from there, doing a aluminium foam, aluminium foil roll on both edges that are going to be seen on all of them. Not a very fun task of gluing them. So the way that I do this is I know how big the steps are going to be roughly. It's and I'll just do it by eye. So it's going to be that. Um, I'm going to put some glue along this corner, not going up to the edges because that just means you end up getting stuck to your fingers. And that means that as I'm doing this, I can line it up, make sure it's square by eye. I can pinch the edges with my finger and thumb and then I can squeeze there to make sure that the glue is going off. And with super glue with this foam, it kind of melts and forms a bond between the two pieces. And in not very long, that will be stuck. So I can just hold, I feel it beginning to stick, and I can just hold that in place. Which isn't very interesting viewing. But you end up with something which looks like that. And then you can repeat the process as many times as you need to. Oh, and also, I told you to keep this bit earlier. Well, I'm keeping this bit from earlier. Now, if I take this and I turn it upside down and I put it over here and I take the other set of stairs that I've made already, place them there and that there. Boom, that's the inside stairs done as well. Well, for me, at least. We'll be getting straight into how to do these awesome railings, which is nice and simple, right now. There's going to be one from here to here, one from here to here, and one from here to here. I'm going to take some of the XPS foam, and I've set this gauge to a sensible size. Um, this is a homemade gauge, you never guess. Uh, and I'm just going to run that straight through like this. That's going to get us a bit that size which is just ever so slightly too big. So I'm now going to run it through 
should be absolutely perfect for our needs. Next up, I'm gonna give this a quick roll. I love that this is enough just to give it that awesome texture. Now, you're almost certainly gonna have some of this skin side to it. We're gonna have that downwards, and we're just gonna give the top a quick roll as well. With the bottom, I am gonna make a little mark at every centimeter interval. So we have our marks at each interval. It's important that you're able to see them from this angle from above. And this next bit, I love. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this, at every interval, I'm gonna push this in to the hot wire cutter, hold it there for a second, and then pull out again. So let me show you. So it's gonna go in like that, we're gonna hold it a second and allow it to widen and then we're gonna pull it out again. And what that does is it creates this kind of keyhole shape. So again, I'm gonna go in all the way, hold it for a second and out again. I do not possess the skill to do these absolutely perfectly uniformly, but you know, you can just hold it in there a bit longer and see if it's gonna widen a bit. And that's the result that you get. So I'm going to do the rest of them. And there we have it. I mean, they're pretty uniform. They're not perfect, but they're definitely good enough. And next up, I'm just gonna score these gently at the top of the keyhole all the way around to make it look like bricks on all of it. So it's gonna be there, it's gonna be across the top, it's gonna be down the other side again. So I cut that one down into two pieces, which is uh, this one and this one, and I've made another one as well. And uh, finally, we need to do one for here. One of those death or glory moments within uh, crafting. So this is the bit, it's been rolled with the aluminium foil and then I've marked every centimetre and then I've marked what vertical would be. And the idea is to try and create a similar, although it won't be the same, a similar thing to what was on the other ones. Um, let's try a middle one to start off with because the ones in the middle are easy to work with. So try and do the same thing where it goes in, we wait a second and then it comes out again. So it's not going to be identical. Hopefully it will look in keeping. We've ended up with that. Combined with that, I think it looks pretty decent. Not perfect, but certainly good enough. Just going to add some brick lines and do one more of them and then done. I can show you another example here. So this is the little railing thing that's uh, we made. So that's it without being dry brushed and that is it with being dry brushed. Hopefully you can see the kind of detail that's been picked out there. I don't like how these just appear to float. They're like they're not resting on anything and annoyingly and quite beautifully I've realized just how good it looks with that trim there. So this is one of the, the railings that I made earlier. So the next step that I'm gonna do is to make a few of these. So there's gonna be a, a three inch one, a nine inch one, a six inch one, and a six inch one. So I'm gonna make some more of these. And this is what they look like once they're on the finished model. So I've reached the decision that I am going to base this, which means I'm gonna put it on this, um, on this board, which um, the reason against it is that it makes it a, a whole lot bigger, makes it a whole thing, um, and also means that however you decide to decorate this, that kind of defines what sort of landscape it can go on. Whereas you know, if it's just you know a thing, just a building, you put it anywhere. Um, but also, I need to do a floor in here, and sticking just the inside floor bit in, and not the rest of it 
can be problematic. All I need to do at the moment is decide where this bit is going to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw roughly um, whereabouts the floor is. Remembering that there are stairs here. A shape like that. So this I'm going to cut out small tiles from, um, from XPS foam and uh, fill up this entire area with them. So that's gonna be that done. I'm gonna paint the whole thing one color. I'm gonna draw around the outside bit here as well. Just because of the, the idea of maybe having some flagstones here as well. Cutting flagstones couldn't be much easier. Uh, first of all, I reached into my bag of shame. This is all of the offcuts from different projects I've had. Um, and something like that is going to be about perfect. If you've got a hot wire cutter, this is great. I've set a gauge already and then hopefully I just... Okay, I feel like that's enough. That well, took, took me a minute. Get a hot wire cutter. Right, before I do anything silly like stick anything down, I'm just gonna quickly make sure that all of these are give or take right angles. I've taken the liberty of just trimming one of these down slightly so it fits into the doorway like that. And essentially I'm gonna try and just fill these up fill up the space with these in, in an interesting way as possible. We're getting roughly here. Essentially I'm going to do the same thing filling up the rest of it and I think that's about the only work I'm going to be doing. So this is what I've come up with. Obviously the stairs are going to be in that wide open area there. Um, I've probably gone a bit over the top because none of this bit is ever going to get seen. This bit will, but you know, it's fun. Um, and then I'll add some tiles out here as well. Now I am going to glue this. I've glued one already, but let me show you how I'm doing this. So I'm keeping them all in place. These are just sitting there, but I'm letting each um, tile just kind of define where the next one goes. So taking lifting one at a time, putting it down, pressing, and that's pretty much set in place. And just glue down, press, hold, done. So as it goes down, just make sure it is creating straight line with the one next to it. So I'm gonna get on with doing the rest of that. Blue tiles are glued, not yet painted. I just decided to put the stairs in just to see what it looks like with it. And boy, am I happy with that. Um, gonna put down and stick some outside tiles now. Floor tiles down outside, they are all glued now. And I've drawn around the whole of the outside of what the structure will be. And now I'm gonna cut this off going to film a little bit of this because people like to know what's going on so put a nice fresh blade here and I'm just going to cut in at a nice and flat angle and then this will just snap on this is this here is exactly what we are going for see how it's nice and Kind of tapered into the what would be the, the board rather than it just being a blunt edge like that and this is what we end up with take our aluminium thing this is still the same one from before and now that these are all stuck down it makes them so much easier to add texture on rather than Next up, I'm gonna paint this um, 
possibly black, maybe very dark gray. Very unsurprisingly, we're now going to dry brush these uh, tiles. This is where the tiles being rolled with the aluminium foil really comes into its own. very hot day today so this glue is going to be drying far too quickly for me to do all of it and then um, and then flock it so I'm going to do it bit by bit so what am I flocking with so I've got some battlefield scatter which I like to use quite a lot but I've mixed this with uh, a lot of uh, well, a couple of different green flocks so there's going to be uh, a kind of grassy element to it but definitely a rocky element to it as well <laughs> sprinkle it on basically some of it is more rocky some of it is more grassy but you could do that yours however you'd like to do it so nothing complicated going on here just I'll put some glue down and then I'm putting some scatter okay so when I come back I will have glued and Block for the rest of it, you don't need to see me do this whole thing because it's going to be much the same. Here we are, the, a lot of this will fall off, but that is the result of having glued it and flocked it. So I'm going to leave that to dry. But damn, does that look good! How to construct the ground floor of the Gondor Mansion. So in today's video, we're showing you how to take it from something like this, where nothing is stuck down at all, to the position where everything is stuck down and in place like this, combined with the previous video on basing. You're also going to see one of the biggest mistakes that I uh, made and how I corrected it. So let's get into it. But first, watch out for this statement. There's all things just to kind of line up and make it all work. So I've been doing some prep and just thinking about it before starting to record. So I think I've got this right. If not, I may have to redo the stairs, but let's not let that happen. Next up is the mildly terrifying part of gluing bits together. So obviously you want to make sure that you're putting the right pieces in the right way, so that I know that this is at the front door and I know that this is the edge that goes with this. So I'm going to be using super glue to bond it. Um, there's loads of different places you could add super glue. I am going to add it, so this is going to come in here like this. I'm going to put super glue here, here, and here. Obviously you can put it on the tops, on the bottoms of the tongue, uh, the tongue and groove joints, but when you slide them together, because it's a pretty tight fit, that can just kind of push the glue out to the edges and then you've got glue marks on the on the side. So what I'm going to do is, I definitely know it's the right piece, I'm happy to go ahead. Just a blob of glue on each one, and then essentially I'm just going to go for it, because this one is pretty good. And you can take any right angled thing. So if you've got a set square, great. If you've just got an off cut of wood, that's fine as well. And just make sure that that is a nice square edge. So that one's one of the, I would say, not too bad ones. The next one stick is not my finest hour. I mean, because I'm not using like a laser cutter and I'm just using a knife and foam and foam can sometimes be uh, unpredictable and uh, other excuses as well. When you put this, corner together here like this. Both ways I've cut too deep on it, which means that if we put the glue there, which I tried with super glue earlier, it's not going to work for us because it simply isn't going to be in contact. So we've got two choices. We can either do super glue on the tops and all the things, or what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going, I'm going to use a glue gun. The inside of it is going to be pretty well hidden from any uh, anything nasty. So I am going to be very careful how much glue I put and where I put it, now you don't need much, so I'm going to put that much and be careful not to get too much anywhere else. Barely even squeezing the trigger, but just putting a bit out. Definitely make sure it's the right way up, right way around. Using my thumb and finger to hold that in place in terms of how far in or out it is and getting the angle right. But hopefully 
that bit of glue. It's going to give a second longer because we're asking a lot of it. Because it's getting based, and this is another good reason to base it, because it is getting based, this is going to get all stuck down to the base anyway. So the strength of this joint isn't important. It's just good to have it square whilst we're doing the construction of things. So I'm going to put glue on the inside edge. I'm going to put it on the top kind of outside edge here. I mean, this is going to be the most unseen part of the whole build. It's lucky that I chose this position to do my absolute worst work. And when I say worst work, I mean, it's, it's fine. No one's going to die. It's just, could be better, but it's good enough working for us. Yeah, that's good. At the bottom, it's good. In theory, because the other ones are good, that one should be good as well. So that is that now glued together. Yeah, going to carry on doing the same thing around the rest of it. So the remainder of these joints all stuck pretty nicely and what's nice is that this kind of springs back so there's some tension pulling it in. Um, I'm going to put in the stairs now. Also I've gone down the side and made sure that these, I mean, the ones that are blue here now, you can see that I've just had to shave like a fraction of a millimetre off. Nothing complicated here, I'm just going to super glue all down there, all down there, and then hold it in place. There's all things just to kind of line up and make it all work. So I've been doing some prep and just thinking about it before starting to record, so I think I've got this right. If not, I may have to redo the stairs, but let's not let that happen. Okay, so I'm going to do one edge at a time, I think, because there is a bit of give. slot in exactly there. So it is holding. And you can probably add it up this way if we can. And just so that I can put the glue along this edge here. One of my classic things from Entirely unsure if any of this is in shot, but added glue on each one of those. I'm going to move it back, back down to flat just to make sure I get this in exactly the position I want it to be in. Which I think is there. If it's slightly off the square, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it's nice as it would be. I may, I may put some hot glue down here, in fact I think I'm definitely going to just because there isn't a lot holding the stairs up. Not that it is going to be taking much weight, but it'll just add an extra level of strength which will be good. Now for the slightly scary bit, I'm going to glue this down to here. I have cut a piece of foam here, this is just to push this out a little bit, it's because of the way that it's structured, the, this corner is getting pulled in and I don't want that to happen during the sticking down process. So I've worked out where I need this to be. So I'm going to super glue all around, put super glue on all of the edges, stick this part down first, and then these stairs just need to be pulled back just a touch. So, so it's going to be there. I'm going to put super glue down and then push that slightly and then hold the whole thing down and then hope. Solid plan. It's going to try and twist out of shape a little bit, but not too much. Can't see anything going drastically wrong at the moment, so yeah, I'm going to hold this a while longer. So be back once it's all glued down, I guess. So off camera, I just had the least amount of fun ever. I was uh, just starting to look at putting um, putting the floor in and, and I 
came to put this in here, I was like, what the hell? Because you can see there, that is way, way off of 90 degrees. So I couldn't work out what's going on. And idiot over here, I stuck the stairs here and they should have been stuck to there. So I've just had to, off camera, because I thought, I don't want to film this. I had to cut underneath there, underneath there, underneath there, underneath there, down the side of the stairs too, so that I can stick it back together there, because that is where it should be. That's where it should have been all along. And then that brings that back to the 90 degree angle that it was supposed to be all along. So did all of the right, right stuff with doing the right angles all the way around. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna have to stick that back down there and just do like a touch up job with some gray paint. Um, but you know, this is why we, um, also means I might have to stick some more tiles down there. I'll have a think about that because fact I probably will so yeah be absolutely sure before you stick things down because you don't that's about as horrible I mean it didn't take long but it's just a horrible job to have to even think about doing but um yeah just thought I should share that with you it's one of those strange situations where I'm changing how I'm going to make it part way through uh, doing this and this is the second iteration of this I made one of these before and I sold it because I wasn't happy with how I put it together in terms of uh, tutorial now, when I made that one before, I used some EVA foam to do the um, floors. But I've realized that, well, number one, I love how this floor looks with the rolled, uh, with the aluminium foil rolled over that. Um, if I do MDF board with foam tiles on top, I reckon that'll look really awesome. And it's a better material to work with in terms of accuracy. To start with, what I'm going to do is I've measured this. This needs to have a centimetre strip taken off of there, and then I need to cut, work out how to the amount to cut off of this corner here. Which so this bit has been cut. I'm definitely going to cut the top step off so it can just rest along that edge there. There we have it. Just sat there, and it's just literally balanced along that edge there. Nothing is holding it up there other than the fact it's a good fit. Um, and then I'm going to use another bit of this off cuts of wood, of which I have many, um, to, that sounds like a really rubbish boast, um, to make that there. So I'm going to have to put some supports in to hold them up, but yeah, happy with how, happy with my decision, happy with how this is going. These are the two floor pieces in place. Uh, still just kind of balance there. Uh, next up, I'm going to paint these, I'm actually going to paint these a kind of darkish brown, kind of almost as this. There's wood underneath and then there will be tiles. Uh, I've already cut tiles to be uh, flagstones, which will be stuck on afterwards, but uh, I'll show them, show you this once it is brown. Okay, so this is the floor tiles I've put down. Now, what I've done here, is whilst this that was still on, I drew around where the wall goes and uh, then just stuck down pieces a little bit. Not caring about making completely perfect, 90 degree, everything straight, almost encouraging kind of a bit more randomness, but that's what it's turned out like. Uh, next up, I'm gonna do what we did with these tiles here. So what that will be, what that will involve is, first of all, taking aluminium foil and we're gonna roll it on all of it. These aren't stuck down yet or anything. Um, and then it will be to paint them gray. Uh, the paint may well take over this brown, but I wanted to have the brown as the see-through color should anything not, uh, not get covered. So that's what's gonna happen next. We know it's gonna be, it's gonna be dry brushed in a minute. So I'm doing this bit first. The floor part to be at this height here. So what we need to do is create some little things to hold it up. So I've just taken these off cuts which were created when I made the railings. I've rolled it with the aluminium foam because that's gonna get seen, so on that edge only. So 
So that one is going to sit perfectly there. Now in terms of doing the height for the other ones, the easiest way to do this is to simply get an off cut of the MDF. When we glue this, hold it like that, because if I'm holding that to that, and this is square with that, then that's going to be the right height. Okay, so I'm going to apply glue there, MDF there. Start to hold a little bit. The MDF can go, it can stop being so fiddly. Yeah. And the other thing is, if you got it slightly wrong, it's not going to be the end of the world. But this one, really conveniently, this is the perfect height already. So all I have to do is glue this to this. And the same applies to this one over here as well. I can sit there, sit there like that. Perfecto. It's not going anywhere, even with models on, that's not going to go anywhere. So I might, add, I'm going to add one more along here and maybe another one here just for completeness. We'll need one along here for the piece of um, flooring that goes here but same thing applies. At the business end of things now um, I'm going to be gluing the two parts of floor down. I'm gonna use the glue gun. The problem with glue guns is they can be slightly erratic when it comes to how much glue comes out. What we want is nice thin beads. So beads of glue like that, please. I want it to stay hot. fairly quickly now, but everything should line up pretty well. Not what you want to be doing. Uh, to start off with this, this is uh, EVA foam or play mat foam, whatever you want to call it. And I've marked out just one centimeter intervals because um, it's going to cut some one centimeter strips. That will be plenty of what five is. So we have this here and we're going to be having this here at the side. This whole thing is six inches. This one is six, uh, seven inches, six, five, four, three, two, one. So just cutting lengths of that. And then what I've done is I found the central part of all of them made sure that's all lined up and then stuck them all on top of each other using super glue. And then you have two that look pretty much identical. Supporting part of the roof and I'm using the three mil MDF that I used for the floor. I have a mark here and obviously I've got the marks here. So the roof is gonna meet this point here and this point here. So this is 10 mil, sorry, 10 centimeters but what I did was I held a bit of wood up and just marked it and then cut it. So I'm going to quickly score out some bricks on this foam, which is as simple as doing this, and then the door's going to knock. All this is is me finishing off the scoring after I was rudely interrupted, and the bricks, um, I tried to do the same size as the ones on the rest of the build. The roof parts, I've painted the this one side of it and the edge. Um, this with black paint, and that's uh, resting on an old peanut butter tub. In terms of painting our sides, um, no need to do any sort of base coat, so I'm just going to go straight in with a dry brush. In terms of how I'm doing the dry brush, so I've got a uh, bit of paint in my hand now. So I have a sponge, get some of that on there, 
dab off the heaviest of it. And I'm gonna do that on both sides of both of them. What I've done here is I've taken one of the lengths of this stuff here and I've marked in half an inch from this end, just to where the center is there. And then I've placed this, one of these across like that, on its front like that, and I've cut off that bit there. And then I've just uh, cut down vertically there. Okay, I have cut a large number of uh, little squares. Um, some of them stay together, so I'm taking advantage of that. Uh, and these are gonna be the roof tiles. Now I'm not gonna roll these with the aluminium foam because I don't want them to look like stone, I want them to look more like slate, is that I'm just gonna stick them all in a row. I think occasionally I'm just gonna do a slightly, slightly off center one maybe because I don't want them to all look completely perfect. It's gonna overhang the edge a couple of millimeters and it's just gonna use super good to put these down. Uh, Leave the super glue there like that, and then overlap it. I'm gonna leave a tiny gap there, a bit of an angle. Stick this one out a little bit more. The next row of them, they are gonna be like that. So they are gonna be overlapping. I'm gonna start with a half one, just because I want it to kind of look a bit more realistic. And you can just do it by eye, or you can go right. This is the line that the tiles are going to go on, like that. You probably won't be able to see that. I can see that because of the light hitting it. And then just make sure that all my glue goes along that line. Um, or you can just do it by eye. Let's start with a half tile like that and just make sure that it overlaps. Put in gaps if I want to. Down if you want. And these roof tiles, all I've done with these is I've taken long bits of XPS foam. You'd have seen this when I was when I'm cutting floor tiles and just run it through the uh, hot wire cutter again and again and again and again and again until I had loads of tiles. Before we paint the roof, um, I'm just going to use a biro to, um, you can't, this won't come up on the thing, but you can, from my point of view, I can see where the lines in the tiles should be. So I'm just gonna define these a little bit more just by running a biro over them. Um, and it also gives an opportunity to just create some damage into them like that if you want to. But in general, I'm just, and obviously you can, you can do some proper damage like that. To say that some of them have been a bit broken, adds a bit more realism and, and all I'm doing is just pulling off the edge with a biro, not anything difficult. So the lines defined, a bit of damage added um, and next up it's going to paint it so I've got some cheap fairly bright blue paint. Now because of the direction of the tiles it's in order to kind of get it where you want it to go it's better to kind of go across rather than that way because whether these are only at the top, it's really easy to snap them. Well, I haven't done it, but I'm guessing it would be very easy to snap them if you started painting in that direction. Yeah, not much to see other than me just painting this. And there we have our painted roof sides. I'm gonna glue these roof pieces on to the other roof pieces. And the way we're gonna do this is by putting beads of glue down here having this like this and then propping these up to be vertical. Go. Because a line. So get it up to the edge. This one up to the edge. And with the glue gun you've got a little bit of and that's pretty decent straight away. So put that to the side for two seconds. Do the same. And then flip it. So 
Okay, see that's going to be set now already. I'm going to make a piece to go over the top, and this is 21.4 centimetres, so that's going to be long enough. This is 20 mil foam, so I'm going to cut a 20 mil, making a square. Is this how I want to do it? I'm going to say yes, it is. Um, to fit around this. So I'm going to try and make this into an L shape. Um, how I'm doing this? Well, I'm kind of making this one up as I go along, which sometimes I do. Really bold and say half a centimeter. There are no doubt easier ways of doing this. I need to do half a centimetre from this edge here. Now the easy way to make this would be just to cut two pieces and have them kind of meet up, but I want the idea of it actually having a point to it, not two things meeting. I'm going to cut down like this. like that. So the best way to do this might be to just to cut it off in chunks. And like that. If we do it all the way along, then we'll end up with a really nice roof. I don't know what those are called. Please tell me in the comments if you know what those things that on, go on top are called. But yeah, I think I honestly think that will look great. Cut through. Oh, that was satisfying. So that. Oh, look at that. Sometimes I amaze even myself. Um, um, because this is the outside of it, it's gonna it has this kind of slight sheen to it. I'm going to sand it. I'm gonna carve some tile things into it with a biro, and, and I'm gonna paint it the same colour as this. Um, Close to finishing off our roof, we're gonna dry brush this now with some white, adding more colour, adding more detail. So that has had nothing done to it, whereas this has been hit with a white. All right, so we're gonna do the other side, maybe a bit more to the side I started as well. Now come back to our piece here. It makes it prettier. So for this, I'm going to apply a generous amount of glue all down here. Just make sure I get that down as far as it needs to go. Yeah, that's stuck already. The wonders of the super glue. And that's our, that is our roof complete get ready to attach these trim parts which are going to go between the top and bottom floors i'm going to have them kind of halfway between each so it can actually cover the join between the two this bit here is going to have a bit of trim all the way along here all the way along here and then from here up to the second one we need to cut off a little bit of these archways which are otherwise going to get in the way i'm going to take half a centimeter off of each. I'm just going to mark that. And this is all happening because I made the railings too nicely. Uh, so I'm going to get the knife between the archway and the wall. 
gonna cut down as carefully as I can. And then I'm gonna do the downward cut and hopefully I'll then come off like that. So I'm doing the cut this way first. could then sit up against that. Okay, the scariest bit of the whole thing, I'm gonna glue this down onto that. I have wondered about whether to leave it as something you can take off. I've wondered about having the trim attached as ways of kind of lining it all up. But honestly, I think the best thing for the build is actually for it to be stuck down. Um, the problem is this is this can move, this probably can still move, so it's very easy to get wrong. But the other good news is that the trim can hide a multitude of sins if I was to really mess it up. I'm gonna go for super glue over the glue gun just because the glue gun can be a bit melty, it can come out weird, it can leave strings of stuff everywhere that get stuck in the wrong place. So I'm just gonna bite the bullet and do it with super glue. Do it quick but do it well. I've actually been practicing how I'm going to do it. All right, I'm stalling, let's go for it. All right, I'm going for it. as well with this so that is uh, there forever now next up more super gluing by adding the trim bits on the chuck glue down on it and then just go for it because you know exactly where it is going great thing and already it would be hard to tell where that actually broke. in a couple of places just to kind of neaten it up but other than that it's uh that is the trim completed
Don't attach the railings. Um, it's a case of just getting these all cut to the right size. And this next one can overlap that. And then this one is exactly the right length already, which is good. And then this one should be the right size. So a little bit on the end and then across the bottom. So again, a little bit, what you're gonna do, probably that. There. I could have done these all a lot earlier, but I think that the sort of thing that I would just catch as so I was doing other bits and pieces, um, and then it would just be, they would be knocked off and I'd be gluing them on again. And And there we go, it's the railings added. One final railing I forgot about, um, going in here. Same thing, just gonna use some super glue. It's fiddly, I'm not sure what you can see, but I'm just... And this is the sort of detail that you really don't have to add, but you decide yourself. I think I just finished something off, had symmetry for what's going on here, which is good. This build really is full of last minute decisions. Um, I'm really, I don't like this, how this kind of finishes here. So I have a, a spare one of these that I made. So I'm actually gonna put this from here, up there, and I think that was great with that. I just went to this, and then we'll just tuck that in See how well worked out glued down it is. I think we just answered that. So the answer is not very. Yeah, perfect. And if this can just slot underneath there, I'll be a very happy man. It barely need, it's barely going to need gluing because it's going to be wedged, but I will glue it. Hopefully, it will dry pretty quickly. So, going to Feed that down to there first and then just ease it in. And it looks like that was the plan all along now. And the final ish stage of this uh, build is just to add some more realism, I guess. So I've got some uh, Agrax so I've drawn it. I should do a small section down here um, so you can see what's going on with this. And then I'm going to. Um, do the rest, most of it off camera because it's there's a lot of this thing to do. So it's, I mean, the agro surface that's a kind of brownish um, wash. So it's to kind of think about where things may be a little bit dirtier. So starting, so I've got a agro which is like a very uh, dark brown one, and you've got a, I've got skeleton horde which is a kind of more of a kind of a bone flesh, uh, and then I've got a thonian camera shade which is a greenish um, tinge. So the idea here is to kind of build up the layers of kind of grime, I guess. So I start off with it being really dirty towards the bottom. And then maybe in areas around there where water might have built up, maybe inside as well. I mean, there isn't really a hard and fast rule set to follow with this. I just kind of make it up as I go along. But in previous ones, which I feel like have looked good, I just uh, I've done exactly like I'm showing you now. Just looking at that section there, that's probably enough with the, that. So we move on to the skeleton horde, which is a different type of brown, but still a brown. So kind of moving up from there.
that. Yeah, this is just, just done quickly. And probably with this level of brown, what I'd also do is I'm gonna do this kind of uh, across the window bit here. Definitely some water would have gathered up on this railing bit here. What I'll also show you what you can do is you can load it up either quite thickly or with quite a lot of water and cause a kind of deliberate um, kind of drip down here to happen. Just kind of letting it run wherever it runs. The Euphonium camera shade, which is a really nice green color. Yeah, that's a, definitely a lot of that across the, around the window that's there. But essentially just adding bits and pieces of this wherever you feel like would look good. And don't be, like, don't be afraid to experiment with it. I mean, it's not, it's not gonna ruin anything unless you get, using a, a wash, like a shade, um, it's gonna be difficult to ruin it. Unless you like really, really overpower it. But I feel like that, And just kind of this gradation of it, I feel like really adds something. That's really under the windows, definitely gonna be greener. But just in general on the walls. Um, just adding that bit of color really adds something. Makes it feel older, used, grimier. Unless you want it to look brand new, in which case don't do any of this. But. Hopefully that's all coming out. So if you can compare that to the, the ones next to it, I feel like that looks better. So I'm gonna be doing this sort of thing across the whole building, which is gonna take a while. So back when that's done. So I'm gonna go around and do a whole bunch of what I'm gonna call finishing touches. Um, so it's things like this here. So you can see how these two join, not exactly the same height. So if I just take a, these sort of thing that would be so, nothing -y. you would not get noticed once you're playing at all but if i just slowly take that to that uh, put the uh, aluminium foil just roll it across there paint that gray it'll look much better i've already done the same kind of thing I'm just kind of tapered it from one into the other but now there are a few places like this where the gap here is just not like i'd like it to be i'd like it to look tighter I've got some uh, some black XBS foam. I mean, you could just use um, blue and paint it black. Um, doesn't really matter because I'm just cutting into like a little wedge shape like that. And then from here, I'm literally just poking that into the gap. Like that. And it will go in as far as it goes in. At that point, you can just simply cut it off like that. Now you can see what's happened, but what we can then do is we can go over this with a little bit of paint. You can see I've done this one above already. We go over with some of the gray paint to bring it into line with the, the rest of it. Um, and the gap will go much less noticed. So there's a few places around it that I'm uh, gonna be doing that. But I think that now, especially once you're just looking at the whole thing rather than like zooming in on, you know, that's what it looks like up close. Even up close, it doesn't look horrendous. It just could look better. Um, so just those two have done. And I'd say that that looks better than, you know, the one below it where there's a big gap. So that's what I'm doing with a bunch of these. And there we have it. We've reached the end, you reached the end. Congratulations if you watched all the videos. I really hope that you've enjoyed seeing this Gondor Mansion go from humble foam through to the completed product. And I think that um, I'm genuinely really, really happy with how it has turned out. Hope you are too, and hope you are happy with the own one that you make. Uh, like the video, like the other videos, comment on them, and let me know what you wanna see me make next, and maybe I'll just make that for you.